damn, they just killed Dolph, y'all. Y'all see his arm hanging out the window? You're now tuned in to followers of the way where you get that raw, uncut, and unadulterated truth. Stay tuned. was shot in broad daylight in Memphis today. Let's bring in Arthur Chen now with the latest on what we've learned, Arthur. Steve Laurie, right now a manhunt is underway for the shooter of rapper Young Dolph, who returned to his hometown of Memphis to visit an aunt who has cancer and to give out Thanksgiving turkeys for the holidays. Who shot and killed Young Dolph in his own hometown? This grainy photo released by police shows a person in gray pants and a dark hoodie with gun in hand, apparently firing. Also released a photo of a white car that may be linked to the case. Police have not said where the pictures were taken. There have been 10 people killed in the last five days, three last night, and one that actually happened right here, just a block down from where young Dolph was shot and killed earlier this week. And with everything that's happened over the last few days, do people question their safety? And what's the solution? A man got out of his car, gun in hand, and walked up to Noble's car, who then quickly left and started running. That's when the gunman chased him and began shooting, hitting Noble and a bystander who was sitting in his car. And then just two days after, two other rappers were shot, shown on your screen. Boozy, also known as Torrance Hatch Jr., was shot at the vigil for Mo3. And then a dentist and aspiring rapper, Dr. Rose or Jarrett Rosenborough, was shot too multiple times when leaving his office. Now, along with Rosenborough, two other people were wounded in the shooting north of downtown Dallas. The two rappers and bystanders are recovering now at a hospital. Pop Smoke was known by some of the biggest names in the business, like Nicki Minaj and 50 Cent. His murder has stunned fans everywhere. Everybody's talking about it. Police say suspects broke into his home and shot him. The home is on Hercules Drive in the Hollywood Hills. At breaking news overnight, Grammy-nominated rapper Nipsey Hussle shot and killed outside his own clothing store in Los Angeles. Tributes from NBA stars and political leaders are coming in overnight, praising the performer for his focus in, on stopping gang violence and helping kids. Adrian Banker is in LA. Disturbing surveillance video showing the murder of South Florida rapper XXX Tentacion and the moments leading up to it. The 20 year old was killed back in June and four men have since been indicted. CBS 4's Kerry Cott is in Fort Lauderdale with the story. Surveillance cameras captured the ambush of rapper XXX Tentacion as he prepared to leave a Deerfield Beach motorcycle dealership last June. The cameras show a vehicle block the rapper's exit, and then men jump out of the vehicle and confront XXX Tentacion. One of the men goes into his car. Then there's a confrontation and a robbery. Shalom and greetings to all my family out there that's scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. As always, I greet all of y'all in the one and only true name of our creator, um, the All Shaddai, the Honorable Abu Yahuwah. And I uh, hope everybody doing well today. Um, you know, if you're over here in the United States, you know that we're currently in what is known as holiday seasons. Um, excuse me, they're currently over here celebrating uh, what is known as Thanksgiving. And it's pretty much the Europeans' uh, takeover of America when they came in and slaughtered the Indians and stuff. So they observe this every year. Uh, so you're going to have people that's going to be in the kitchen making turkeys and things of that nature and, uh, you know, football and things like that. So I'm in the kitchen this week, you know, I ain't cooking no turkeys, <laughs> um, but I've been kind of spread thin lately. So um, I have a lot of different things going on. So now I got a little bit of time. Uh, I'm finna uh, knock out some of these videos that I need to get out to, uh, to the fam. So um, today uh, I'm finna get ready to get into a message titled, a warning to the rappers out there, okay? And this message is going to be a little bit different from my sermons that a lot of you all are used to be doing. Um, and there's actually a lot of uh, change, and a lot of different things that's coming within this ministry um, real soon. I'm currently working on um, FOTW 2.0. And uh, once that's uh, released and laid out to the people, you're going to see that um, there's a lot of uh, different changes and things that's um, on the horizon and uh, will be laid out when all of that come. And one of the things 
that I'm gonna be doing is like right now, like this best I'm getting ready to get in today, I'm gonna be focusing a little bit more uh, my attention on the Hebrew people, the Israelites that's here in this nation. Um, I know that over the years, a lot of us have come out of Christian dome and things of that nature. And so as we have come out of these places, we have, we're saying that we're in the truth, but we're still holding on to certain concepts and ideologies that come out of the church. You know, like for instance, you have the rapture doctrine, okay? You got the church that's waiting on the rapture and then you have uh, people that sit up there in the truth, you know, basically sitting back and waiting on mystery man to crack the sky, you know, which is a false doctrine. And I'm gonna be coming for that false doctrine here in the weeks and months to come, okay? We're gonna, we gotta deal with that, you know what I'm saying? And the reason why is because we have the vision. We know what's next uh, in line for the prophecies. And that's the restoration of the nation of Israel, okay? So, you know, you hear a lot of people out here, you know, talking all this rah-rah about this and about this and that. But a lot of these people just don't have the don't have the vision that hasn't been given to them, you know. So I'm gonna be um <clears throat> laying these things out in the weeks and months to come. Um so uh yeah, it's important that uh we build this platform up, and this is what I'm in the process of doing. Cause see, like over the years, I've kind of just kind of sat back, you know, put material out, things of that nature, and just kind of laid back. But now I have a new vision in a new direction that the father want me to go in, you know? And it's like, when you look out at our people here in this nation, the Hebrew people, okay? You have to be mindful that you have a lot of different people that sit, that have big platforms, that sit in high places. And these particular people do not have our people's best interests at heart. You know, this is why it's time for us to build these platforms up. This is why I'm letting you know that you need to like the video. Um, if it's something that you like, you know, share the video, you know, subscribe to the channel. You know, we got to we got to build this platform up so that we can have a voice on the things that's going on here in this nation. Because the people that have these platforms are not really speaking on behalf of the people you see. And when you look like within the body with among the people that say that they're in the truth and they're, you know, representing the kingdom, you don't see these people on major platforms where they're able to really voice their opinion and really get some things done. And when you go into the book, right, and you look from Genesis to Malachi, one of the things that you have to be mindful of is that all the men of Yahuwah, all of the prophets of old, they were tied in where they had access to the most powerful people in the empire. You know, whether it was in the nation of Israel or any other times that the people were in captivity. Look at Daniel now, you know. So the question is, is that if, if, if we say that we sit from the most high, why don't we have access to these particular people in the, in the uh, within the kingdom, you know? So we're getting ready to build this platform up where you know, when there's different things that's going on uh, within our within the Hebrew community, we're able to speak out and get some things done and start holding these people accountable that need to be held accountable uh, because, you know, the people that sit in these high places, they just don't represent our people. They represent self, you know what I'm saying? And so this is, you know, one of the things that I'm getting ready to get into today where uh, we had a situation uh, that happened like about a week ago where uh, you had a well-known uh, rapper, rap legend uh, out of Memphis known as Young Dolph, okay, uh, that was gunned down in Memphis, uh, mafia style, uh, you know, died in a hell of bullets. Uh, he was shot with what our people would call a chopper, uh, 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 like uh, a Draco. And, you know, those guns have real big bullets, you know, uh, seven six twos. Uh, some of y'all may know, some of y'all may not, but those are some big bullets, you know, to be getting hit with. And so this man was gunned down in Memphis um, at a cookie store as he was coming back to Memphis to basically give back to the people for Thanksgiving and, you know, whatnot, whatever the case may be, okay? Now, this is not the first rapper uh, to die like this, and he's not going to be the last rapper to die like this. He's just the latest rapper, which has... Uh, basically 
move me to do the message that I'm getting ready to do today. Okay. And so, uh, you know, whenever we see these things that's going on within our community, where we see our young black brothers being gunned down, when you go and you look at some of these platforms that our people go to to get information from, whether it's the radio station, the news, uh, you know, online, whether it's uh, uh, you have different platforms that's on uh, um, 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 Patreon, you got what the Shade Room, uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, Clubhouse and, you know, these different platforms like the Breakfast Club, you know, these people, you know, they come out whenever these things happen. And the first thing that these people say, you know, is that, oh, well, um, you know, whenever a brother or a Negro get money, you know, people hate, they hate to see people get money and, you know, we, you know, we kill him each other, da, 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 you know, or is, you know, he's a multi-millionaire, he has no business in that neighborhood and he shouldn't have went back and all of this theater, you know, all of this garbage that's being spewed now on all of these different platforms and these are nothing more than mind control techniques that are being used by these people that sit in these in these high and lofty places, you know, which is really essentially the white man, okay? And then you have those which are, those in the community which are the turncoats that go and work for the white man. And then the white man gives them these techniques to use and spread on the people. And then the people are gonna uh, 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 adopt these different ideologies and concepts because these people that sit in these lofty places, these black people that are nothing more than just house Negroes, they look up to these people like, oh, well, these are the people that we wanna be like, or these people have this and that. So they're telling us what it is when really in reality, they're not. You have to understand that this is nothing more than a psyop that has been sprung on our people. Let me explain something to you. If I can't go back to the neighborhood that I grew up in, all of the people that I grew up around with, playing in the neighborhood, all the, you, you know, the, the aunties, the, the you know, all the, the, the parents that, you know, we grew up in the neighborhood that we know, if I can't go back to the neighborhoods that I come from, I can't go nowhere. It just, it amazes me how we never get to the root cause of the problem, but it's all this, oh, we need to do this, we need to do that. Why is it that white people, when they make money, they don't have to leave their communities and the people that they grew up with. They're not making millions of dollars and leaving from their community the people that they grew up with and running to black communities and the ghettos where our people are at just to get away from their people. You don't see the Arabs doing that. You don't see Mexicans doing that. You don't see any other nationality doing that but us. So, I mean, so, so, so that means that there's gotta be a bigger problem here. And this is, once again, this is coming from these people that sit in these high places, you know, because it's like, oh, well, once you make it out the hood, you don't need to go back. See, this is, this is a crab mentality. These are turncoat mentalities. And this is what's wrong with the Hebrew communities around this nation. You have these people that are warring against us, trying to keep us in bondage instead of helping your people. If these brothers was doing what they were supposed to be doing, they would have no problems being in the communities that they come from, of going around the people they grew up with. The problem at the core is that we have to stop supporting this rap music, this demonic stuff that is causing our people to go out here and engage in these unlawful acts. This is what the problem is at the core. But you know why they would never tell you that? Because everybody palms is being greased from that. So it's gonna be everything but that. See, the people need to come out and boycott these major record labels and these people that are putting this stuff out on the streets for our people to hear. Every time somebody get killed, what do they do? Oh man, it's messed up, they hate this and that, RIP this and that, and then they going back to their business. See, the people are corrupt 
from the from the top of the food chain all the way down to the to the lowest of the food chain. To all of these supposedly black leaders that's leading our people to the, the pastors and the preachers. How is it that in every ghetto in America, you have these churches set up in these black communities, but yet where is the preachers and all of these people at? Where are they at? You got to be mindful that when you go back into the book, it helps us to understand that the elders and these people are the people that's supposed to be running the community. Where are these people at? They're nowhere to be found. Why? Because they're trying to get their palms greased. They're trying to see what they can get so that they can get ahead. They don't care about the people. This is why if we open up, go with me real quick to the book of Jeremiah real quick. Okay, because this is something that's not new. This is something that was going on in the ancient kingdom before the father uh, destroyed the southern kingdom. This is the same thing that was going on then. And it's the same thing that's going on now. This is why I'm being moved to do this message because it's a, uh, it's a, we gotta, our people have a rude awakening that's, that's, that's coming down on us, you know, and we gotta understand this, okay? Now, if we go to, go with me to uh, Jeremiah chapter 8. And uh, I'm going to pick up at uh, verse number eight. It says, and this is Jeremiah chapter eight, verse number eight. It says, how do ye say we are wise and the law Yahuwah is with us? Lo, certainly in vain may he it the pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are shamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of Yahuwah and what wisdom is in them. Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them for everyone. Now listen to this right here. For everyone from the least even to the greatest is given to covetousness from the prophet even to the priest. Everyone deal falsely. So during this time period when the father got ready to destroy the southern kingdom and send them into captivity, everybody was corrupt. It's the same thing here today. Where are all these pioneers at? Where are the Dr. Dre's at? Where, is the, where are the, the Puff Daddies, the Jay-Z's and the, uh, uh, you know, the Ice Cream? Where is all these people at that's supposed to be OGs out here? You know what I'm saying? Why are they not coming out and saying, you know what? Yes, I've engaged in this and done this, but it's time out for that. We have to stop. We got to stop putting this type of music out there into the ether that's causing our people to go out here and do all of this stuff. Where is these people at when this stuff happened? Where are they at? See, the problem is, is a lot of these people, when they finally wake up, it's too late. You know what I'm saying? And, and let me say this, okay, because... And it's not, it has nothing to, it has nothing to do with being racist. I know a lot of people get emotional when you start to talk about the race thing, but it's about being real and realistic on what's going on. See, the first thing that we have to understand is that the white man, okay, the white man is our enemy, okay? Now, when I say that the white man is our enemy, this doesn't mean that you're not able to respect people and deal with people in a righteous manner, okay? This is not what I'm saying, but we must understand that from our days of captivity coming into this country on slave ships, okay? Being under the white man, you are, we are still under the white man. The white man is still our enemy, okay? Now let, me, now, let me get some scripture on this just so people can understand this and not be lost because I know that, see, over the years, and I'm going to get into this uh, probably around... Uh, Black History Month, you know what I'm saying? Because if you notice, they glorify Martin Luther King, okay? And if you notice, you don't see any other days being dedicated to, uh, 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 you know, Malcolm X, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 Nat Turner and none of these people. You know why? Because see, these people uh, will embolden uh, uh of the Hebrew people that's here in this nation to want to do better and really have that revolutionary mind state. But you notice they always peddle Martin Luther King because 
you have to understand what Martin Luther King represented. It's a, it was a mechanism that was used in order to forever keep black folks under Europeans. You see, this is why if you notice at the end of Martin Luther King's life, what was one of the last things he said? Or oh, I feel like I, he said, uh, and I'm just paraphrasing, but uh, he was like, uh, um, I feel like I've integrated my people into a burning house because he understood that what he was fighting for was 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 just not was not logical it was not gonna happen you know what i'm saying so these are things that i'm going to be that i'm going to be going into but if we go to uh go with me to deuteronomy real quick okay deuteronomy let's go to deuteronomy 28 and this is a chapter that a lot of our hebrew people go to and a lot of people know about this but something i want to point out here that i think a lot of people miss here okay um if we look at Deuteronomy 28, and let's look at verse 68, okay? It says, And Yahuwah shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way thereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt not see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto who? Not your best friends. And, oh, let's be equal, and let's be this and that. It doesn't say that. It says to your enemies. See, and you shall be sold unto your enemies for buying men and buying women, and no man shall buy you. So, understand when we come into this country and, and, and slavery, you got to understand that the white man is our enemy. This is not our friend. Okay? Now, this doesn't mean that we're not to deal with people in a respectful manner and things of that nature. This has nothing to do with that, but you have to understand that this is our enemy. And this is where a lot of our people get it mixed up at thinking that, oh, well, that, you, you know that we're equal and you know a lot of people oh it's not about race it's not this and that everybody but you have to understand at the end of the day i don't care how they dress it up the white man is never going to allow you to be equal with him or over him because he know that that's going to be his demise and when a lot of our people start to wake up what happens to them they get knocked off look at the people like michael jackson with the sony stuff you see what I'm saying? Look at look at Prince. When all of them come out and let you know, like, this is what it is, what happened to them? They gone. Look at people like Kobe. And you don't see a lot of people talking about this, but you got to be mindful that Kobe was getting ready, allegedly, uh, from what I was hearing and read, was getting ready to leave Nike and just really built and pushed his own brand, which was the Black Mama brand. And if you notice, at the time of his death, he was in a lawsuit with this big pharmaceutical company over the name Black Mamba. Had his own training thing and all of that. So they're not finna let you get ahead of them and do all of this after they make all this money off of you. You see what I'm saying? And so the story continues. So when a lot of these people finally wake up, they understand that if they really want to say something to some of the people out there that want to speak on this stuff, they can't say nothing. You know why? Because their hands are tied behind their back. Why? Because they have worked for the white man all their life. Anytime you have a person, just from a just from a just from a regular standpoint, if you have people, say you're a, a boss, whatever the case may be, and you got people under you that you feed and make sure that they have to take care of them, right? If one of these people go against you or go against the grain, nine times out of ten, what are you gonna do? You're gonna X them out, you're not gonna deal with them more, you're gonna cut them off. And this is what happened to these people that come out here and try to go against the grain and try to really tell the people the stuff they need to hear. You know what I'm saying? But because they have they have took from the white man, the white man has built them up. He has the power to take this stuff right back from them. This is why if you go to, let's go to the book of uh, Ezra real quick, okay? Let's go to Ezra real quick. So I gotta, I gotta teach this thing, man, because people not, people not understanding this. This is not being taught in these different congregations that people frequent. They don't understand this, you know? I'm not saying that we could go out here and disrespect white people and things this is not my message but all i'm saying is this is the this is this is the black man's enemy you know what i'm saying as long as the black man is under the white man he's never gonna prosper and this is just the fact of the matter and the white man knows that this is why he keeps the hebrew the black man up under him it's just it's simple to understand this it's, it's not hard and it's real but this is stuff that people don't want to talk about because they're too emotional you know they running around in La La Land, you know. Now, let's look at some here. Let's go to the book of Ezra. And uh, let's go to Ezra. 
Let's see here. Ezra, Ezra chapter 9. Let's see here. Is this where I want to go? Do, 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 do. Ezra chapter 9. Let's see here. I believe this is where I was trying to go. Ezra chapter 9. Uh, do, 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 do. Right, Ezra chapter 9, and I'm going to read a few verses here. I'm going to pick up at verse number 10. Ezra chapter 9, verse 10, right? It says, And now, O our Elohim, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded by the service of the prophets, saying, The land unto which ye go to possess it is unclean land, and the filthiness of the people of the lands and the abominations which have filled it from one end to the other with their uncleanness. Now listen to this. Now therefore, give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor what? Seek their peace or their wealth forever that you may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it for the inheritance to your children forever. So one of the things that the fathers tell the children of Israel when they was going into the land of Canaan, don't seek their peace or their wealth. Now that's powerful. Because over here today, we're in the same situation among a bunch of corrupt people, you know what I'm saying? Wicked and abominable people, you know what I'm saying? And what the, the first mistake that our people has done is they have sucked, they have, they have uh, seeked the peace of the white man and his wealth. And this is the first mistake. This is why you, they can't be strong and do the things that they would really want to do because their, high, their hands is tied behind their back. This is coming from the father. He's telling them, don't seek their peace or their wealth. And so when you, when you take their wealth and they give to you, then you have to tap dance and dance for them. And if you go against that, they're going to ask you out. Every time something happens, like right now, down in Memphis, they're talking about, well, you know, one of the things that we need to do uh, with the poverty is we, you know, we need we need to address the, the, the poverty down here. And they're always looking for money. They're always looking for handouts. And you have to understand that it's blood on that money. When you take that money from the white man, it comes with stipulations. There's certain things that you have to do. And the thing that we have to be mindful of is that there's enough money that's flowing through the black community, but we don't need these handouts from the white man. It's nothing more than greed on the, on the behalf of our people. You know, look at these people like Floyd Mayweather. Look at the Puff Daddies, the Jay-Zs, the, you know, um, the Denzel Washingtons, the Will Smiths. There's enough money that's flowing through the hands of our people to, to do the work that we need to do in the community for our people. But what is the problem? Everybody is out for self. And then every time something happens, it's all oh, this and that. You got to be mindful that with these rappers. You have these higher ups, these people that sit in these high places. And when these young rappers die, they're making money off of these people, off their records and sales and all of this stuff. Because they know that people are going to go out here and, and, and buy their stuff. So they're still making money off of these people. This is why they're not going to come out and say, you know what? We need to quit making these, this type of music, this and that. Because they're making money off of it. So instead of coming out and saying we shouldn't be doing it, they're just going to say, man, we got to stop killing each other. And we got to stop. Hey, no, you got to stop putting that poison into the ether. This is the problem. And I don't see people coming out. Boycotting this stuff. It's time for our people. We gotta if, if if people are really serious about what they're saying about the killing and all of this stuff that's going on in the black community, then it's time to come out and boycott this stuff. Stop buying that stuff. Stop listening to their stuff. Yes, it's stuff that we like and we want to, but we have to what we have to stop supporting this stuff if we really want to take a stand against our, our young black uh brothers that's being killed out here in these communities. And I don't want to hear, oh, it's just, oh, because you're a multi-millionaire, you, you should Okay, so you mean to tell me that, let's look at somebody like LeBron James. LeBron James can go up to Cleveland and do a turkey drive and hand out turkey and do things for the community. Ain't nobody going for him, trying to kill him. Why? Because look, at he's not putting out negative energy into the ether. Bang him up, shoot him up, and all this other stuff. And all, he's not, they're not doing that. 
So how is it that these people can go in here, but with the rappers, it's a whole nother story. Oh, you make it million, you can't do it. No, it's because these men are in these communities and they are engaged in the wars and the beef and the drugs and all of the stuff that's going on in the community and they're targets. And when people catch them out there, they're going to deal with them because of the wars and the things that they are kicking up in those communities. So let's get to the root of the cause instead of all this fluff that you see people talking about. You see, and another thing that I want to address is that you have these these weak white these weaklings that come on and be like, oh well, you know y'all out here marching for Black Lives, and I don't support Black Lives Matter none of that stuff like that. I know it's fraudulent, but they always want to try to compare uh, black on white killings to black on black crimes. Well, I don't see y'all coming out with all these killings in Compton and Chicago and all of these other things. And let and let me say this: you got to be mindful that. You're dealing with two different situations here, okay? The killing that's going on in these black communities are going on for a reason, whether it's what they call retaliation or to get back, you know what I'm saying, for somebody else that was killed or whether, you know, somebody uh, robbed somebody or, you know, some with women. You know, women always behind, you know, a lot of this stuff that's going on. But it's happening for a reason. They're not just riding through these communities, shooting up these communities for nothing. They're shooting trying to get people that are targets for certain particular reasons. Now, you cannot equate that to what the white man do. When the white man go out here and just kill a man and kill a black person in cold blood, that's something totally different. You're killing this man for nothing. It's not like, oh, well, he was coming through my window. and was, you, No, you're targeting and you're killing in cold blood for nothing. Those are two totally different situations. And what I want people to understand is that there is a prescription that has been prescribed here in the book by the father whenever it comes down to murder. And let's look at this. So, Because I want people to understand that one of the things that the book bring out is the father said is that my thoughts are not your thoughts. You see, you don't think like how you think. So when you look and you see all of this killing and stuff going on, you're like, oh man, you know this and that. But you have to understand what the father has laid down and how he how he operate, not how the United States and the government and all of this stuff that, you know, this, this psyop, this, this mind, these, these Jedi mind tricks that they want to play on us, have, you know, that have laid out to us. We got to look at how the father's looking at stuff. Now, go with me real quick to the book of Numbers because I want to break this down so people can understand this. And uh, I believe this is... Okay, so let's go to Numbers chapter 35, right? And uh, Numbers chapter 35, and I want to pick up uh, at verse number six right here. So we're in Numbers chapter 35, verse six. It says, And among the city which ye shall give unto the Levites, there should be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither, to them, he shall add 40 and two cities. So as the father was setting the kingdom up, what he did is, is he set some cities aside for uh, a person if they accidentally killed somebody. So if somebody killed somebody, then they could basically go to that city and they could be there uh, if, if it was unintentionally. You know, they, of course, they would go before the congregation and if, you know, the man was, that it was an accident and that man would stay in those cities. Now, he couldn't leave those cities until the, the days of the, the high priest died, but he could stay there. And it's basically like, you know, accidental, basically to protect him from the, you know, the can so they didn't, they didn't kill him. Now, if he got outside of that, then they, you know, they could basically get the get back, as they say, the retaliation, you know what I'm saying? So this is what the father had put in place. But one thing that I want you to understand is that, uh, if you look at verse number uh, uh, 11 and 12, it breaks this down and says, then he shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you that the slayer may flee thither which killeth any person at unawares, unintentionally, accidentally, okay? And they shall be unto you cities of refuge for the avenger that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. So he would go there, basically go before the congregation. Now, if he was, if it was intentionally, then he would be put to death. If it was unintentionally, he would stay there, okay? Now, one of the things that I want you to understand is that if we go down to verse number uh 16 it says and if he smite him with the instrument of arm so that he died he is a murderer and a murderer should surely be put to death and if he smite him with throwing a stone wherewith 
he may die and he died, he is a murderer and the murderer should be put to death. Or if he spied him with the hand weapon of wood, wherein he may die and he died, he is a murderer and the murderer shall surely be put to death. The revenger, okay, of blood himself shall slay the murderer when he meet him, he shall slay him, okay? So it's basically talking about, you know, the, basically the family, you know, the, the, you know what I mean? Uh, basically that if you murder somebody, when they catch you, you know what I'm saying? They was going, as we say in the, in the neighborhood, they was going to get to get that. Now, why is this important to understand? It's important to understand is because when you look at, let's just say like Chicago, for an example, you know, you hear all this killing that's going on. If, say for example, say if I have a brother, cousin or whatever, friend or whatever, and you kill him in cold blood, right? And we know you don't want to kill them. If these particular people go back and get the get back on them in the eyes of the father, how's he looking at it? Hey, this is this is how it's supposed to be done according to his rules and regulations. Now here in America, they're gonna do things different. They're gonna say, oh, you know, you'll go to court, okay? And and if you're found guilty, they're not gonna put you to death in most instances, unless it's something like a capital punishment or something. A lot of times if somebody goes out and kill people, a lot of these people will go to jail for life and be there for life because they're gonna make money off of you. Because it do, you know, if people would actually put the death, it would deter people from actually going out and killing people. But if a person know, hey, I can go here, you know, get life and at some time possibly try to find a way back to get home, hey, you're going to still live your life out, but you're going to live it out in prison. See what I'm saying? So this is the American way. These are their rules and regulations. But if we look at what the father prescribed to the people, this is the thing that people have to understand. So as these people are dying and going into the afterlife and they got to stand before the father in judgment, he's going to judge them according to his rules and regulations that he laid down. You know, it's no different than if a man catch another man with his wife and he come in and kill him. Now, sometimes I think over here they would give them like a, a, a what is it, like a passion crime or something in passion where sometimes they might not get a lot of time or in some cases they might. But at any rate, in the eyes of the father, the, 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 that's that's worthy of death. So that these particular people, when they go before the Father, they're going to be declared righteous in the eyes of the Father because of the rules and regulations he's laid down. So we got to be mindful that there is a prescription for the get back. If somebody kills somebody in cold blood and they people go and get the get back in the eyes of the Father, this is not no sin in his eyes because this is what he's prescribed in the book of the law. Okay. But we got to get down to the root of the cause. So I'm, I, I never get caught up or panicked when, oh, all this COVID and all this stuff going on. I don't, I don't, I, it's, it doesn't move me because I understand these things. And this is why I'm breaking these things down to you so you can understand it. And you're not like, oh, why? we got to get to the root of the cause. And we got to, and it starts at the top. We got to start boycotting these people and, and, and hold these people accountable for what they're doing. You can't sit in these high lofty places and say, don't you think that if people like the Puff Daddies, the Dr. Dre's, and the J, if these people come out and be like, you know what, we're not supporting this stuff anymore, this bang, bang, shoot them up, this and that, we're not buying it, don't go out and buy this stuff, you think people are going to follow them because these are people that people look up to. But they're not going to say that. Why? Because they're making money off of that. You know what I'm saying? And you got to understand, we're at a time where now... There was a time where you had the era of the people they called the studio gangsters, where they would go in and rap about all the stuff they weren't doing. But now today, these particular people really don't get, they ain't getting no play. Their, people eyes are more focused on the people that's actually really living this stuff, that's really doing this stuff. You know, these are the people that the people can relate to because the people that's in poverty, they're more closer to these, to this, to the stuff that's going on. You gotta understand, Dr. Dre never died in places where they having shootouts and stuff every night. So they, I mean, yeah, they can relate to an extent, but they don't have to go through that every night. The people in the in the ghettos and the prop, they have to go through that. So they're gonna relate to that. They're gonna be more drawn closer to that. And this is why I'm saying, this is why we gotta come out and we just gotta hold these people accountable, man. You know, because it's enough money flowing through the black community where our people can help our people. But for some reason, they don't wanna help our people. You know, we need to pass these laws and all this other stuff while they sitting back getting filthy rich and not, you know what I'm saying, coming together as one and saying, man, let's do this in this particular neighborhood. Let's do this and do this and try to help to get our people, on, you know, where they on the track that they need to be on. So I'm tired of hearing this stuff about well, we need to get money from the white man and all this. We don't need that. 
All we need is our people to come together and really get the work done. And it's time to start holding these people accountable. So the thing that I want that I that that the warning that I want to send out is that right now you have a mala. An angel is, you know, people would say, you have a mala, a death that's moving through this nation. Okay. In these rappers, if our people don't get on the right track, they're gonna continue to drop. A lot of them are going to go to jail. You have the feds that's moving through these neighborhoods and hitting people with the RICO. You see what I'm saying? Racketeering charges because they can put them away for a long time. So they swooping up and they get not just one person, but they can get the whole gang. You know what I'm saying? And this is important because we steady losing our young black, our strong black brothers to the grave or to the system. You see... And it's really rare that you, you know what I'm saying? It like the like 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 these particular black men, the strong black men, these men are becoming more rare and rare each day. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the people that sit in these places, uh, these positions of powers, like going back to like your like your like the preachers and all of these people, these people ain't standing on nothing. And we gotta be mindful that in these ghettos where people are coming from, a lot of these young black men are coming up in situ in situations where the father it's not in the it's not in the in the in the on the scene. So the next thing that a young man that's growing up whose father is not on the scene is gonna do what? He's gonna gravitate towards the next man or fatherly figure that he see. And this is this is where the community come in at. So what brothers gotta understand is that it's not just your, your work don't just stop at your household. You know what I'm saying? You gotta think about the young black brothers in the in, in the communities that don't have fathers. They don't have nobody there to give them that direction. When well, you have to step up to the plate and help them brothers out and give them that direction. You know, I was in a situation, first of all, my father was in my household as I was growing up, you know. And I know people that didn't have their fathers in their household that, you know, that looked up to my dad because, you know, some of the stuff that my dad did for them or, or, or the knowledge that he dropped on them. So we got to understand that it's our job to do this. And you don't see these preachers and all these people in these communities doing this stuff. They just sit back trying to get their palms greased. And this is why we got to hold their feet to the fire. We got to hold these people accountable. You know what I'm saying? Because they have to do more. You know? And we shouldn't be scared of our own people. But we can't correct and try to help our people get on the right track. And this is the problem. You got all these old scary people that sit back... A lot of these people out here you see teaching, they, they're not going to touch and touch on none of this stuff. And, and not only are they not going to touch on it, they're not going to go into these communities and get hands on with the work. You know why? Because they weak and people are not going to respect them. And this is why you don't see them talking on this stuff. They might say something, oh man, you know, our people this and that. And you know, they always want to throw the, our, our black people up under the bus. But one thing that people got to understand about me is that I love my people. You know what I'm saying? I know we got those that are good, the good image of our people, but then we got some of our people that's messed up and we have to help them. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be a, I would, I wouldn't be a man, I'd be less than a man if I don't see that and try to help help our people. You know what I'm saying? You got these people that sit back, you know, this man, get on the body here, man. Y'all ain't sitting on the and they can't go into these places because these particular, these, these, these young cats don't respect them. Cause they ain't never did or gave them nothing. You know? And then we got these, these people that's supposed to be the leaders. They steady promote uh, guns and drugs and murder and all this stuff. If, if they got all this money, why would they not help these people get on legit business deals? You know what I'm saying? And I don't want, and I was just tell, I was just talking to uh, uh, a couple of my, some of my people the other day. There's no way that a people can tell me that a neighborhood is this dangerous when you you can't tell me that Compton is so dangerous and people can't you know this and that when you got all these a rabs all these people sit out in these black communities and make money out there. So how's it safe for them to sit out there and make money? But then our people can't. You can't go back to your hood once you get successful. You got to go here this and that. But these people sit right out here and make money all day long. It's the poison that our people's uh, pushing out there. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to leave you all with is go with me to the book of Ezekiel, and I'm gonna close and I'm gonna close it out uh, here. Uh, Ezekiel, <clears throat> Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel chapter nine, and. Uh, 
I'm going to start at verse number four right here. It says, And Yahuwah said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Now, of course, you can read the chapter and get the understanding of what's going on here, but just to kind of point out the PowerPoints, Ezekiel is dead in the captivity right now. They're not in Jerusalem or, you know what I'm saying, in the nation. In, in that particular land, they're actually in captivity. So one of the things that, that a lot of people have been deceived on, like today when you see them name the land Palestine over there, Israel, the land was never called Israel. The people are always addressed as Israel. So right now the people are in captivity. He says, go through the midst of Jerusalem. My people. So the people are always the nation and is, is identified as Israel, not a land mass. This is something used to deceive people. So right now they're in the Babylonian captivity. He says, go through the midst of my people. Go through the midst of Jerusalem. Okay? And mark the people because in the captivity during this time period, they was doing the same thing. Off the chain. The father is still dealing with his people in the captivity because even though he sent them in the captivity, he still expected them to upload his law, to uphold his laws and his commandments. And because they wilded in the city, if you go back to chapter 8, you can see that. The stuff that they were involved in. It's the same stuff that's going on here in America. Okay? So now he's sending in a Moloch, a messenger through the city to mark the people. And listen to what he says in verse 5. And to the others, he said, in my ear, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. And come not near to any man whom is a mark. And began at my sanctuary, then began the, then they began at the ancient men which were in the house. So he sent them my lot through the through the through the uh, midst of the people to deal with them. He said, "Slay the old, the young, the children, the women, and knock them off." And this is the same time that we're in right now, where people starting to feel it. There's a ruach, there's a spirit that's moving through this nation, throughout the black community, where we can feel it. And this is why I'm here bringing this message to you to let you know that this is going to continue and it's going to get worse and worse and to people wake up and stop supporting this stuff and turn back to Yahuwah. You see, this is what time is in, this, this time and season that we're in. And it's all out war, it's all out assault. It, it, the father's not playing. A lot of these brothers is going to end up in jail. A lot of these brothers is going to the grave. And it's all fun and games until they hit the people that we love. See, the father is very strategic in what he's doing. You know, people, you know, when it's when it's your turn and you up, it ain't no fun and games. When it's the people that we love that pop up and then it's like, oh, you know, then now everybody wants change and all this other stuff. But before, you're not. So this is the warning. It's time for our people to get back on track. These young black, these young black brothers, these young black Hebrews that are losing their lives in these streets, these are the men that we need on the front line fighting for the nation of Israel and righteousness. You see, because these are actually the brothers that's going to do something. These other people that's sitting back, they ain't hitting on nothing. They shaking like a pair of crowns. This is why you see how you can have these blacks, these elders, these older men in these communities and have all of this stuff going on. And ain't saying nothing, ain't doing nothing, just letting our people run wild. They're not hitting on nothing. They're not going to do nothing. The people that's actually out there involved in this stuff, they're doing it. These are the people that, the young brothers that we need to save, that we need on the front line. You know what I'm saying? Because these are the people that's really going to stand on business and righteousness because they already have that heart, that mentality of operating like that. You know? So I just wanted to get this out, man. And uh, I hope that it, uh, reach the people that it need to reach. Like I said, this is not like one of my normal messages that I sit down, but I'm going to be focused more uh, on the nation of Israel and our people and trying to help get our people on track, you know, and this is why it's important to build this platform up because it's time for us to sit at the table and hold these people accountable. You know what I'm saying? Not only our people, but these major people that sit on these major platforms, um, that's, that think they are dictating and, and giving our people this false misinformation. You know, we got to hold these people accountable and we have to challenge them on the things that they're doing. Because a lot of these people that sitting at the table, they're not saying nothing. You sit out, you listen to some of these interviews and the stuff that people, they're not talking about nothing. All of the important stuff, they don't want to, they, they, they don't want to talk about it. It's just like you had 
uh, the Dream Champs, where you just had Kanye West on there, and he was dropping knowledge about how he was the Israelites and the Hebrews, and talking about Messiah and the stuff that happened, and what they start doing, uh, 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 let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the stuff that's going to keep our people in bondage. You see what I'm saying? So we got to start holding these people accountable and holding their feet to the fire. And if they're not going to stand on behalf of people, we need to start boycotting them, stop supporting them and all of this stuff that they got going on. OK, so now I'm going to wrap this message up and um, I'm actually not done. I'm going to take a quick intermission, go get me a little bit of coffee or something. And then I'm coming back. I'm going to get back into uh, another message that I'm getting ready to do uh, that's titled uh, The Great Transfer of Wealth. So I'm going to pick this right back up in part two. We ain't going nowhere. I got all day. So um, I'm going to drop that. And then I got another message after that I'm going to drop. So uh, we'll pick that up uh, in part two. So uh, catch y'all here in a little bit. All right, Shalom.